Welcome to Just Asia, AHRC TV's weekly human rights program. These are the headlines. Balochistan's giant bombing kills many, despite anti-terrorist operations. Nepal police brutal torture leaves victims' life at risk. Thai prosecution index records for participating in referendum event. Indonesia has made little progress under Widodo regarding real human rights and rule of law. Urgent appeals from the Philippines, Indonesia and Nepal. Welcome to AHRC TV's Just Asia, I'm April. This week, Just Asia begins with Pakistan, where terrorist attacks continue despite the Pakistan army's various operations to cleanse out terrorists and their abatis. In the latest attack, a suicide bomber blew himself up at the crowded courtyard of Sufi Saint Saha Nurani's shrine on November 12th, killing some 60 persons and injuring 156. 25 persons remain missing and there are at least 15 women and children among the dead. The suicide attack was carried out in the evening, when more than 600 devotees were performing the Damal, a trace-like dance in Balochistan's hub district. The Saha Nurani shrine attacks a lot of people at the time of the year from other parts of Pakistan. The terrorist Islamic State has claimed responsibility for the attack. The IS has also accepted responsibility for two attacks in Quetta. The Balochistan government, however, is accusing Indian intelligence of being behind the attack. In the past two and a half months, there were three deadly attacks in Balochistan, including two in its capital city, Quetta which is virtually in total control of the Pakistan military. In Qatar, no one can enter without passing through five to six checkposts. And yet, terrorist attacks continue. In October, 24 policemen were killed in an attack at the city's police training college. In August, a suicide bomber struck a Qatar hospital, targeting 71 lawyers who had gathered to condemn the death of a prominent colleague. In Nepal, police officers from Mahotari district tortured an individual for several hours on November 8, resulting in severe bleeding from his anus. Although the victim, Mr. Ganga Mahato, has been treated in hospitals for several days, his bleeding is not stopping, posing a grave risk to his life. He is now being asked to seek treatment at another hospital in India. Mr. Ganga was arrested without a warrant based on a false complaint made by local landlord Birendra Singh to retrieve money from Ganga. In fact, Ganga had already paid back money loaned by Birendra. On November 7, when Ganga was inebriated, he expressed his anger and shouted at Birendra and his son. After the landlord complained to the police about this, Six police officers came to arrest Ganga the same night, but did not take Ganga with them. Two officers returned on November 8 and took Ganga to the Maruwahi police post. According to Ganga's family, Ganga was not drunk at the time of arrest. At the police station, Ganga was forced fat alcohol, tied with iron shackles, and beaten for more than two hours on his hip, hands, back, chest, and legs. Birendra Singh's son, Lalit, was present during the torture. Ganga fell unconscious due to the excessive beating. The police took him to the district hospital, and when there was little improvement in his condition, the doctor referred him to a hospital in Sintamati, India, for further treatment. According to his family members, Ganga's condition is deteriorating and the hospital in Sintamati has asked that he had been taken to a different hospital as they cannot stop his anal bleeding. While three police officers have been summoned for investigation into Ganga's torture, local human rights defenders have confirmed that no departmental action has been taken against the officers so far. Meanwhile, the police have been pressuring Ganga's family and human rights organizations not to talk about the incident. Next, in Thailand, 
20 red shirts have been indicted by a military prosecutor in the northeastern Udon Thani province for violating the junta's ban on political gatherings. The 20 villages were indicted after participating in the red shirt referendum watch campaign on 19 June 2016. The event was organized by local members of the United Front for Democracy Against Dictatorship, the main red shirt faction affiliated with Taksin Sinawatra, Thailand's controversial former prime minister. In a photograph that appeared on social media, some of the 20 posts in front of a banner of the UDD referendum's watch campaign. According to the military, the red shirt villages were attempting to discredit the military government and the controversial referendum on the junta's sponsored draft constitution that was held on August 7, earlier this year. However, Thai lawyers for human rights reported that the event was cancelled before it even began due to the presence of soldiers, and so the villages did not really participate in the referendum watch campaign. They merely took pictures with the banner before they left the venue. After the indictment, the military court granted them bail under 10,000 baht, surety each. The preliminary hearing on the case will be held on 9th January 2017. Moving to Indonesia, where current President Joko Widodo campaigned on the protection of human rights and resolving past rights abuses, two years under his administration has shown no progress in improving human rights protection or the rule of law. Local activist Chris Biantoro reflects on the situation on human rights in the country. With high rates of police torture, land grabbing and a total lack of protection for minority rights, the Widodo government has no specific policy on developing Indonesia's rule of law, resulting in rights abuse and abuse of power. Now, let's listen to Chris. Since current President Widodo uh, inaugurated since two years ago, in 2004, uh, actually we expect a lot to uh, President Widodo will bring uh, reform, especially the law reform, but if we reflect the, reflect the current situation, uh, our rule of law remains a uh, problem. Torture occurred in the police custody and also in prison, and none of cases solved by the uh, law enforcement agencies. And the police, even in the last three years, still become the most, uh, prep, the most, uh, let's say, like the highest number who committed torture. And not only torture, land grabbing, and also uh, land confiscation against indigenous people occurred everywhere in, in Indonesia. For instance, we reported cases which occurred in Blitar, East Java province, where 11 farmers charged by the police because they are reclaiming their land uh, against a local company. And also the land that uh, belong to the local farmers in North Sumatra. They tried to reclaim against the military occupation and what happened, they were attacked and also arrested by the uh, police. The government in so far failed to establish an uh, effective mechanism to uh, solve the land conflict because land conflict, uh, according to some data, include the National Commission on Human Rights, contribute a lot to the uh, human rights violations which occurred in Indonesia, especially in the last three years. Many local government issued controversial regulation against minority, especially the religion and belief minority, banning Ahmadiyya, Shia, and it's also triggering uh, riots and uh, attack by uh, hardliners against the uh, minority groups. And what happened recently in Jakarta, where uh, hardliners groups against the Christian uh, governor, the, one of the candidates. I think this is reflecting that our government doesn't have, uh, let's say, like a, a blueprint how to develop our rule of law because the law on hate speech had crimes already in there, but it never been implemented. It, on the on the contrary or in contrast that. 
the law charged against or imposed against the uh, human rights activists who wrote, uh, let's say, like criticize against the governments or uh, criticize against a company, the cabinet composition of current president uh, Widodo, some of the alleged perpetrator like uh, uh, retired military general Wiranto, who mentioned by the National Commission on Human Rights, uh, responsible on the East Timor case, student shooting, and also retired military general uh, Riyamizat Riyagudu, now in charge as a minister of defense. It is very controversial decision that made by current president Joko Widodo. Actually, they should, they should, let's say, like uh, investigate first whether or not they are they are uh, guilty. Finally, the urgent appeals weekly features three cases from the Philippines, Indonesia, and Nepal. In the Philippines. A human rights defender in Talise Cebu was killed by an unidentified man. Prior to the shooting, the victim had insisted that the police release his nephew because the police failed to show any reasons or warrant for arrest. In Indonesia, police shooting resulted in the death of one indigenous Papuan in Manokwari West District, West Papua Province. Another person was seriously injured in the incident due to the police not following legal procedure in handling a case of local conflict. In the Po, two residents in Bangka district were illegally arrested, detained and tortured by the police under the guise of an investigation into a stolen mobile phone. That is all for this episode of Just Asia. For more on this and other issues, please visit www.humanrights.asia or www.alrc.asia/justasia. Thank you for watching and see you next week.